What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Today I am at SHOT Show 2024. I'm going to be here all week. I'm going to be here doing as much coverage as I can. Uh, I could already feel the SHOT Show crud going through my body right now, so I'm going to try to power through it for you guys. Not sure how I'm going to be uh, separating these videos for you guys, um, but I'm going to get you as much content as I can every day. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching and enjoy the show. Alrighty guys, I am here at the Canic booth with my good friend Nils. Nils, how are you? It's always good seeing you every year. Um, so Taryn and Canic created something, right? Did, so yes. what, what do you guys have going on here? Yeah, Canic and Taryn got together and we made a baby. This okay. is the Canic TTI Combat. It's a full-size five-inch gun with a whole bunch of tiny little details that Taryn really wanted to put into this platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he worked for months with our R&D department in Turkey and we came up with this bad boy. Okay. So like I said, it's a five inch gun, We've got spiral fluting on the barrel. We have a fixed compensator, except it's not threaded. It's got a quick detach system. So oh, nice. push pin, compensator comes off. So disassembly is the same as a non-compensated gun. Yeah. Comp pops right back on. And that gives you the full effect of the compensated gas rather than having like a, a frame mounted thing where you gotcha. lose a bunch of gas. So yep. it's an yep. effective compensator. Got some pretty trick frame cocking serrate or slide cocking serrations on the front and the rear. Mm -hmm. One of the things, the small details that Taryn did is a really high fiber optic rod in this front sight. Okay. Right? So the thought process is if you aim using the fiber, it's a different point of impact than the top of the blade. Gotcha. So if you're trying to be accurate, you're using the steel. If you're trying to be fast, you're using the fiber. With the fiber optic nice, nice and high, it gives you a very close point of aim, point of impact mm. difference between those two. Okay. So in addition to that, we've got a more aggressive texture on the frame as well as this back strap. So if you grip this, like it locks your hand in yeah, tight. Yeah, that's what I was feeling on this one. It feels super aggressive compared to all the other ones. Absolutely. And one of the things you might notice here is we have a full size. This is our Mechanic MO3. This is our brand new competition optic we're coming out with in 2024. It's a kind of an RMR footprint, big window, bigger than an SRO. The price point on this optic is going to be crazy. It's going to be like sub 250, like super, super affordable. But full-size competition optic with fixed co-witness iron sights gotcha. okay. so you don't lose your iron sights putting a full-size optic on this pistol nice. and what's the price on this one going to be so this pistol is going to msrp for 949 that's that's insane usually you see something like this and you're like okay this is going to be a 1500 dollars gun or right. something like that but and you're obviously going to have the good old canic box special right that's one of my favorite things about canic is they always give you a holster extra magazines, back straps, toolkits, all that stuff. So this one obviously is going to come with its own flair. Too, Absolutely, right? yeah. So the same tw the the dual lever, ugh, the same two-tier hard-sided case that the steel frame kind of came in yeah. is going to come with this pistol right here. Nice. Plus a couple extra goodies for you. Gotcha. And when are these going to be available? We're shipping to distributors March. You should see them in April. Nice, nice. Well, thank you so much, Nils. I really appreciate your time as always. All right, guys, I am here at the Staccato Booth SHOT Show 2024. I'm here with... John. John. Nice yep. to meet you, John. Nice to meet you, too. What do we have going on for 2024? All right. So for 2024, Staccato is um, unveiling a new model. Okay. This is the Staccato C. Some of you may have remembered it as a single stack gun before. Yep. Uh, the market kind of died down on single stacks for us, so we re-envisioned it. And now this is the second model in our V3 line. Okay. The CS was the first one. This is now the C. Okay. So the C takes all the upgrades that we did to the CS and brings them into a four inch platform that will have either an, a compact grip or a full size grip. Okay. The compact grip is going to be running 16 round mags. Okay. The full size grip will have 18 round mags. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some continuity there with the CS. Nice. It has all the same cuts, uh, barrel flutings, the extended rails inside, the, uh, the external uh, uh, extractor. Mm -hmm. And then it uh, does run those new uh, nine millimeter dedicated magazines. Now, what uh, the magazines are the ones from the CS? That's correct. Okay. So that magazine's called our V3 mag is a dedicated nine millimeter magazine, yeah. and that allows to make the circumference of the grip a lot uh, slimmer. Yeah. So people that had medium and lower hands were actually able to grip the gun properly now. Did you go over the barrel length on this yet? Or? Yeah, uh, so this is a four inch uh, barrel. That's okay. really, really important. Um, one of the reasons is it's an all purpose gun. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows like the Glock 19 and all those other models, that kind of mid range gun. Okay. You can conceal carry, you can put it in a duty holster. And yeah. speaking of duty, that four inch mark is what a lot of law enforcement agencies uh, stop at as far as the minimum barrel length for a duty gun. So that's why we made sure it was a four inch gun. Nice, nice, nice. Yep. Cool, cool. All of them are gonna also be optic ready. And one of the things that we did with this platform that we actually carried back over to the CS is this wider frame. 
So speaking of that, mm -hmm. we have an updated Staccato CS. Okay. So it's kind of hard to notice, but what we did is we widened and we thickened really the frame on this gun. So that was for two reasons. One, um, it added non-reciprocating weight, okay. which made the gun shoot flatter. Mm -hmm. And for a compact gun like this, we're trying to take every bit that we can. Yeah. Um, everyone knows that the smaller you make the gun, if you keep the caliber the same, the, the more recoil you're going to feel. Yeah. Um, so that helped there. And the second thing it did is aesthetics. Yeah. I mean, people don't want to say aesthetics matter, but they really do. Yeah. It's nice to have a good looking gun. And that line is a lot nicer now. You don't have that step down. Nice, nice. What's the price difference between this one here and the C? So this one comes at twenty four ninety nine dollars uh, base model, and then the C comes at twenty five ninety nine dollars base model. Yep. And I forgot to ask, the mounting options are the same from the CS, right? They're the exact same across our entire line, including our V2 line. Okay. We still use the exact same system. Okay. And you said, you mentioned you could swap grips on these? So swapping grips is, it, you can do it, although we'd recommend a gunsmith do it. Yeah. Um, it what, what I was saying is when this gun ships, because this is a working prototype, there's still some things that we're working through right here. Uh, when this gun ships, it'll kill you, uh, you can buy either as a full-size gun with an 18-round magazine or a compact model with the 16-round magazine. Gotcha, gotcha. So are people going to have the option maybe later on to like say, like, I want to put a shorter grip on it. They just got to go to a gunsmith to do something like yeah, that. They so get they a, they, uh, we'd recommend that they send it into us to do that. That way we can make sure we can warranty everything on it. Because, um, you know, there are some people out there that claim to be gunsmiths that might not be as skilled as, as they lead on. Gotcha. Uh, so that is one thing with our guns so for any of our uh, components that we do want you to send it back to us so we can keep that lifetime warranty um, and keep taking care of our customers. Gotcha, gotcha. And lastly, I saw that there was a version of the C, was it the CS with an island barrel on it? So we do have a prototype uh, that we showed at our range day yesterday that had an island barrel for the CS. Uh, um, that is something that we are trying to get out in 2024 as an option. Okay. Um, we do not have any updates as to when that will, will go live, okay. but it is something we are actively working on. Okay. All righty. Thanks so much, man. Yeah. John, Absolutely. I really appreciate you, and uh, you guys are coming out with great stuff. Again, I've been a part of the Staccato team, well, the Staccato family Absolutely. for many, many years, yeah. so I've, I'm glad that they're always constantly uh, updating the platform. So. Yeah, yeah, one of our core values is always forward, mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we kind of bring into the forefront this year, and uh, with the CS and the C, of always continuously improving our platform. Thank you so much, John. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Yep. You guys have a good one. Yep. All righty, guys. I am here at the Global Ordnance booth. I am here with Sam. Sam, how's it going? How's it going? Nice to see you as always. And Glad apparently we have something new today at 2024 SHOT Show. Absolutely. We are announcing and launching the new Global Ordnance Monolith. This is our first Global Ordnance rifle um, or firearm in general. Um, generally, we import products, but we, we tackled this with our partner, FM Products. Um, Foxtrot Mike mm -hmm. um, out of Boise, Idaho to build this gun. They've come out with some really innovative stuff and we, we collaborated them to put it in a package that was appealing to the consumer and, and aesthetically pleasing but also functional. Okay. Give me a little explanation on why it's called the monolith. So this gun is called the monolith for a really cool reason. You know, people think monolithic when they uh -huh. think of that and you're thinking the upper is connected to the rail. Uh -huh. Well, it's, it's monolithic in a different way. So we have two different monolithic parts. The lower is attached to the adapter for the stock. Okay. Or for the pistol version, it's a Picatinny backplate, and it's all one piece. Instead of having to add an adapter on a buffer tube, and it gets clunky and all that. But then the big piece is the barrel. So I'm going to hand you this gun for a second. And we're going to talk about the barrel. The barrel is really, really exciting to us. We um, we have launched this as a one-piece barrel. It's a barrel machined out of a barrel blank with the um, barrel extension built into the gun, the gas block built into the gun. And we've worked and partnered with Dead Air to make a chemo adapter that is milled into the receiver, and or in, excuse me, they're not the receiver, the barrel. So you don't have any kind of issues with concentricity or you know not being able to line it up correctly, and then pinning and welding it, and it just yeah. removes a lot of the things. Yeah. So the monolith is the monolith because of the barrel and the lower receiver, and we're really excited to launch this here. Okay. It's a very feature-packed rifle with a low MSRP of $11.99. Gotcha. Well, that's a pretty good price. And so, from my understanding, it's not piston driven. Correct. It's it's direct impingement. Yes, still? it is. It is still Even direct impingement, it's a... but it's a little different. So I'm going to give you the first. I'm going to tell you about the bolt. The bolt is a 5.56 style bolt, but with a with a 308 head on it. Oh. So it's much stronger, but it also makes it really easy for us to make 7.62 by 39. 
300 blackout. Gotcha. Well, 300 blackout is 556. So yeah. um, it's, it's a really durable bolt. So we're excited about that. But then the gas block and the gas tube are different. So we're drilling the gas pole at a 45 degree angle mm. versus a 90 degree angle. And that gives us more gas pressure so we can decrease the size of the gas port. So we're about a 20% less decreased size of gas port. And then our gas tube, the angle it has, goes into the receiver instead of going at a 90 degree angle and that gives us you know a good dwell time so it is direct impingement but it's an improvement on the original stoner design and it's been really impressive in our testing gotcha gotcha and as far as say somebody didn't want to use a dead air are they able to use any other type of suppressors are they kind of subjected to the uh they're, they're, they're forced to use dead air adapters for this. So obviously right now you can switch your whatever can you might have to a dead air adapter and oh. do the chemo. But we're launching this gun with the chemo because it appears to be the most popular and the best adapter right now. Yeah. We will also be selling this gun and working with other pick, uh, suppressor manufacturers oh. as well as offering a standard threaded version and a 16 inch barrel so people can put whatever they want on the end because we want to be inclusive for everybody. And I don't know if I missed it, so you're going to release this in 5.56 or you're going to release it in other calibers? So right now it's in 5.56, but there's a lot of really exciting stuff to come. Um, this whole line is going to be, you know, you name it, we're going to do it. Okay. All right. All right, so we got something else new that you guys are releasing here. This is the... Grand Power SP45A3. So we came out with a 10 millimeter just recently. Uh -huh. It's been doing really well. Um, and we finally got tech branch approval on the 45, and okay. I think it's going to do really well as well. Um, I think it looks sick with the, the, the UMP magazines. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be great. It's right. really soft shooting. This is going to be the same price as the 10 Same mil? price. Okay. Excuse so we me, have guys. a whole new line of the Grand Power handguns. They're the Mark 23s. It's the newest version. Okay. So things that are improved. You have an improved texture on the grip. Okay. We have uh, improved serrations on the slides, you know, mm -hmm. a little more aggressive than past models. Mm -hmm. um, and then the most exciting part is what everyone wants is optics ready. Yeah. So yeah. the great thing about this pistol, you remember, is it's a rotating barrel. Yep. And versus a, you know, browning design. Yeah. So this gives you the ability, in my opinion, the recoil impulse is much more linear, straight back, yep. and less of that little flip you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the whole line has been revamped from the compact pistols to the the staple of the Excalibur this is the this is the best this is the max this caliber is the one with the uh, metal dust the cover steel dust cover yep, here to yep. add that weight to yep, it yep right? absolutely so we're really excited about this gun we sold out of the first batch we got in mm -hmm. the country and we're waiting for the next one to come in so gotcha. we're super what, what excited about it what can you put on these is pretty um, much any optic? I, I believe it comes with three plates i think it comes with an RMSC plate uh, okay. plate that works for the um, the um, Trijicon RMR okay. and a one that works with like the um, I can't remember the other model right now to be honest with you. Uh, like um, the, I, I think it works with like the like um, the loophole type. Yeah, the, the whichever one's the loophole yeah, mount. Doc, I think it's a doctor. Doctor mount. mount. Yeah, 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 that's correct. So it comes with three, um, three different plates, and we'll have some other options available for aftermarket. But we tried to hit the main, the main three. And what's the price is going to be on each one of these? Like a big um, step up? So it's not a big step up. The difference, you know, obviously costs have increased on everything, yeah. and we are also adding a lot of features with the optics plate. I think. It's it's about 100 to 150 dollars, depending on the model. That's an increase. Okay. The Excalibur was a little bit more because not just the um, the slide serrations, the hammer changed and the trigger got lighter, uh -huh. so it's a much nicer trigger. Uh -huh. um, but but as far as that goes, it's 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 very relative for the price of the pistol. Gotcha. Okay. Alrighty. Thanks so much, Sam. Thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate your time you. as always. Yep. Alrighty, guys. I am here at the. Henry repeating arms boots, some of the best lever actions in the world, probably the best lever actions in the world. But what do we have new for 2024? This one I shot yesterday, and I'm really excited about it, but I want to hear all the technical details from you, the creator, the inventor. Yep. 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 Okay, so yep. let's go over everything here. Yeah, so this is the Henry lever action supreme. It is a box magazine fed lever action feeding from a P-Mag. Nice. So this will accept your uh, standard magazines that you have at home or all your other mag, uh, all your other guns that uh, accept P-Mags, all those mags. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with a uh, free-floated barrel and a rotating bolt and in combination that allows us to have a lever action that is, is capable of having sub-MOA groups, which is something that you normally don't get in a lever action. Uh, it also has a ambidextrous 
uh, magazine release, ambidextrous tang safety, match grade adjustable trigger, and an incredibly smooth mechanism. Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, this thing is going to come in uh, 223 slash 556 and 300 blackout. The 223 slash 556 will come with an 18 inch barrel threaded and the 300 blackout will come with a 16 inch barrel also threaded. They'll all come threaded. Um, and the uh, MSRP is going to be under 1400. We haven't dialed it in completely yet. Gotcha. So this is threaded, uh, what is it, half by 28 or? Half by 28 on the 223 and uh, 5 8 24 on the 300 blackout. Gotcha. Now, the 300 blackout, I think, is going to be the, the, the champion in terms of all the calibers you come out. Because I shot this one yesterday at the uh, industry day with the silencer co suppressor on there. And I thought it was shooting subsonics out of there, but you guys had supers running through that thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that, with the action closed and everything, it just kept all those gases and that thing was extremely extremely quiet and again with that action extremely smooth i was able to get on that thing super fast i'm in absolute love with this thing man you did a lot of lot of good work on this thing um other than 223 and 300 blackout any other calibers that you're going to be coming out with? Or? There are going to be a whole bunch of other ones in the works. Uh, this is a new platform for us, so there will be plenty of expansion, uh, but stay tuned to uh, figure out what will be coming next. Gotcha. Now this takes uh, the the Magpul mags. You can take pretty much any other AR-15 mag in here? That It'll take any MSR mag. Um, you know, some of them are a little bit different shaped, so some of them will uh, drop free more easily than others, but uh, it is designed for MSR mags. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, lastly, we got this whole tactical lever action craze going on right there. Is this going to be compatible with any, like, uh, metal, aluminum parts that you can put on here, make it tactical in a way? Um, out of the box, we're not doing that, but I'm sure there are going to be plenty of accessory manufacturers working on it. Gotcha. Well, Jeff... Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Alrighty, guys. I am here at the PWF, PWS booth, not PWF, PWS booth with Corey. Corey, hey, nice to meet you. What do we have here? This was pretty unique, and it made quite a splash at Industry Day yesterday, and I wanted to get a good explanation on what this is actually for 2024 that you guys are coming out with. So this is the PWS UXR, and that stands for Universal Exchange Rifle. Okay. It allows you to convert from 5.56 to 308 and all the calibers in between. Mm -hmm. Now, um, PWS developed this knowing that the industry has always promised a caliber converted rifle, but never delivered. So we're delivering right now with 5.56, 300 blackout, and 308. Now, the, the firearm platform has the exchange barrel, a bolt head, and a magazine well that really makes this caliber um, efficient. So we have the typical, typical uh, features, folding stock, adjustable length of pull, uh, risable cheap piece, ambidextrous controls, AR-15 compatible grip, and trigger. Comes with a, a trigger tech, two and a half to five pound trigger. Nice. Um, and and uh, But it's all in a nice compact 6.85 pound system that you that's really controllable very very good recoil um, what i'd like to do is break it down kind of show you how we do a typical caliber conversion okay. unfortunately we'll have to drop it. to the ground let's do it so what it is is i have three screws here uh -huh. i take a 532nd allen wrench and i'm able to turn each of those screws approximately a turn and a half when that's completed all i have to do is unlock the bolt and i'm going to move forward pull out the barrel and put it down now this barrel has a lot of neat technology. I'm holding on to the first five inches of this barrel and that allows me to return to zero within a half MOA of what I sighted it in. Okay. I have a gas system that's three positions for, for adverse, normal, and suppressed. Okay. And I have an evacuation chamber. This evacuation chamber works like an M1 Abrams tank where once the projectile passes, 
it pressurizes, almost like a scuba tank. When it goes forward and the and projectile pops, there's angled ports in there that move forward, cause a venturi effect, and move all the nauseous gases forward so you're not getting suppressed in the face. Nice. The, the gas is there. Nice. But uh, now moving forward, I'm just going to take my takedown pin here, move this back. So again, this is just our fire control unit. It, it holds our, our trigger that you can put in any AR-15 trigger, ambidextrous controls. What I think is the kind of the heart of the system right here is my replaceable magwell. So this is set up for an SR25, you know, 308 magwell, but I can go to a Stanag, I can even go to an AK magwell with oh. rocker mags. In fact, if you go look on the other side of our, our booth over there, I have an AK set up. Gotcha. Now, as I break down farther, I can remove the action spring from the back of the, the receiver. I can remove the bolt carrier group. What's neat is, is this will break down in a similar fashion of an AR-15, where I move the firing pin, the cam pin, and the bolt head removes. So now what I'm gonna do is kind of show you the conversion kit that you would have for this is the barrel, the magwell, and the bolt head. Everything else stays the same between calibers. So this is all you would need to just do a full swap on this? Full, full swap. Okay. So I have a, 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 an agnostic chassis here that doesn't matter what caliber I wanna build. It's billable aluminum, 7075. Has the titanium trunnion, which is the heart of the system. Has stainless steel rails, so the carrier group and everything rides on steel rails. Okay. I can change out the um, handguard. It's just on uh, rails and a single pin here. That's pretty rock solid. I can even take the folding, non-reciprocating charging handle and change it to the other side if I so choose. To reassemble, I have some symbols here. You'll notice I have a single dot on this on this bolt. Okay. If you look at the bolt carrier, or I'm sorry, the magwell, I have a single dot. So now with the two dots, I know that I have the right magwell, the right bolt. I just need to make sure I have the right barrel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble the bolt carrier, put in the bolt, the cam pin, the firing pin spring, and the, and the firing pin. It's all ready to go there. I take my receiver, take the right magwell, it interfaces here, give it a little karate chop, it's retained. Take in my bolt carrier group, drops down, my action spring. It locks into the stainless steel rails. And then I can take my trigger pack, go forward, my takedown pin gets attached. Then all I'm doing is reattaching my barrel into the trunnion from the front end of the rifle. It, it locks in. Once I, once I got good orientation here, I'm gonna go toward these three pins, or these three screws, sorry, to 80 inch pounds. Now once I do this, and if I do it in the same sequence and the same torque, I'm gonna return to zero wherever I sighted that in within a half MOA. Function check, we're good. I can lock it open, let it go, and that's the UXR. That's awesome, so pretty much that that was extremely simple. So it's toolless once you take these three screws out. It's basically toolless from there. You just. Yep, yep. That's awesome. And so awesome. Uh, we have plans on next quarter. I'm already working on the 86 Blackout, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and the 76239. Nice, nice. And what's the price going to be on this one? Is it available already? Yes, it's available right now. now. We're shipping in February at $2,500 MSRP for the, the platform. A conversion kit will run you about 550. 550, and basically you can have as many guns as you want in just this one platform. You just buy all the conversion kits you want, and hey, I want to shoot 300 blackout today. Swap that. Hey, I want to shoot 55. Swap that. Exactly. Yeah. Really, the benefit here is, is I can put on a nice higher end optic here. I already have a great trigger, and so now I can switch calibers and have a good optic, a good trigger with uh, manual arms. It's going to be the same across the board, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Gotcha. Now, suppressed, does it do pretty well suppressed in terms of running it with all those different calibers, or is there certain calibers that you're like, okay, we don't really want to run that one suppressed on that nope. caliber? Um, because we sell our BDE line of suppressors, okay. we, we've been putting our suppressors on this. It needs to run in all conditions. We're putting this through the military top test or the Army top test where we're doing all the types of environmental uh, conditions. We, this, this should be a battle-proven rifle that anybody can rely on. Nice, nice. And I love the design, too, and gives me kind of that, like that 
Bushmaster ACR type vibe going yeah. on here. So there's a, there's a lot of influence from a lot of great guns mm -hmm. that uh, we are able to compile into one system, but put on a twist that's something that's really truly different yeah, in the yeah, industry. Yeah. This is very unique. I never really seen anything like this, but uh, I'm super excited how quick you can uh, change everything on that. And, and and yeah, I'm excited for this to come out. But uh, Corey, thank you so much for uh, demoing that here. I know that's. Uh, I mean, for me, it might be difficult, but for you, you made it look extremely easy. So, yeah, I just want to get one just to play with it like Legos and just build stuff around exactly. it. So, but yeah, thank you so much, Corey. I thank appreciate you. it. All righty, guys, I'm here at the Zenith Firearms booth with Logan. Logan, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Um, it's my understanding that you guys have something pretty unique and new for SHOT Show 2024, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is our ZF-56. It's our new rifle. Um, it's a roller-delayed rifle chambered in a 5.56. We'll just grab that and move that in front of us. Right? Absolutely. There you go. So, yeah, what we did was we kind of blended um, your classic roller-delayed, almost like an HK-33, with your modernization like feel of an AR. Uh -huh. So you still have your classic roller-delayed platform. Um, uh, you know, allowing for like less recoil, more durable, easier to clean, great wow. to suppress. Um, but then you have the last round bolt lock, okay. which is, you know, from our understanding, hasn't been done on a modernized roller delayed rifle. Yeah. So once you throw this thing forward, mm -hmm. it's like an AR. You have your bolt release and you can keep reloading. Yeah. Um, everything's ambidextrous on it for an easier feel. Mm -hmm. Bolt release, mag release, safety. Um, so this is your this is your bolt release and like does this also lock the bolt as well here? So yeah yeah once you once you reload uh -huh. that's it all Just day that. and then on the other side you also have your ambi okay. and then ambi mag release on both sides as well. So you wanted to manually lock it, like say you took the magazine out and can you lock the bolt back just by holding that up there if you pull the... the no, so if you actually wanted to lock it back yeah. you have to then you know oh, okay. chamber so it all the way back. it's only by the magazine that'll yep. lock open. Okay, alrighty. And um, so it's roller delayed. So how does the recoil impulse? Because I was trying to, I was trying to go out to the range yesterday and shoot it, but you guys were pretty packed throughout the whole day, so I didn't even get a chance to shoot it. But how does it feel in terms of that recoil impulse? Like MP5 ish, like it has that little bit of lag, but it feels super Absolutely, smooth. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously a little bit different than an MP. MP5 is like butter, right? That's yeah. almost nothing there. Yeah. A little bit bigger round, a little bit heftier gun. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna feel it a little bit, but. Compared to an AR, definitely less recoil, gotcha. easier to feel. Um, we got a few full autos back at the place, and I will say it's the easiest full auto I've ever shot in a 5.56. Gotcha. It's gotcha. pretty awesome. Gotcha. And are you going to be able to, obviously this is like a, like basically a full-on proprietary design, right? So you can't drop in like AR-15 triggers into this or anything like that? Not at the moment. Um, AR-compatible magazine, AR-compatible grip. Um, we are working on a version that will have a completely AR, like lower compatibility. Okay. But for now, to get it working and functioning for this first batch, um, this is proprietary. That's proprietary. Okay, cool. So since you're going to have all this proprietary, are you going to be able to change the uh, rail out to something maybe? Because this one looks pretty thick. Is this the as slim as you can get it just because of that system in there? Or? So we actually are working on getting this a lot slimmer. Okay. This is still the prototype design for shows. Okay. Um, but you know, we got a lot of feedback on it. We started testing a lot of the M-Lock attachments mm -hmm. and realized that we can we can shed off a little bit, which will reduce weight, make gotcha. this a little bit easier to handle. And uh, what's the price point this one's going to come at? And are they available yet, or when should they look out for something like this so to come to market? It's actually available to pre-order right now for okay. twenty-four forty-nine on the website. Twenty-four forty-nine. It's also available in the three hundred blackout okay. as well. Um, same price point, gotcha. and we're looking at delivery first week of April of this first year. Okay, and as far as uh, barrel lengths, are you going to offer shorter ones? You're going to offer them with braces. Yeah, what yeah. Kind so of stuff? we'll be doing 12, 14 and a half, and 16. 12, 14. And so 12 16. and 14 will come with this attachment here, okay. which will allow for any kind of buffer tube. Um, and then our 16 inch will actually come with a full stock buffer tube um, as a rifle. Gotcha, gotcha. All righty. Well, Logan, thank you so much, man. Absolutely. I really thank appreciate you. your time, and uh, again, great stuff that you guys are coming out with. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.